Welcome back to another edition of Sawed in Theaters, where this week we're talking about the Deadpool, the Wolverine. We're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. Hey. Two words. <laughs> Three words. Yeah, I know that. That was the joke. Film stars Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman. Emma Corrin, Matthew McFadden. From then- Succession. Tom Wom's game. Hey, Greg. So this is going to be a spoiler-free one. Obviously. As much as possible. All right. You guys have a good night. <laughs> it's being billed as Deadpool's introduction to the MCU. Where does Wolverine play into all of this? Where does any other people play into all this? <laughs> Obviously, we know Hugh Jackman is in this. We know that. With Logan being the big send-off, right. you know. They said in plenty of interviews... And all that months ago that they were not going to mess with Logan's ending, Logan's story at all. Road trip, journey type of thing yeah. between two completely opposite characters. I mean, you know Wolverine. So many fantastic cameos. And Ryan Reynolds, I thought, sharp. Last Deadpool, for me, Deadpool 2, it didn't hit. It was a little mad. First one was, was very good. Yeah. This one might be my favorite of the three. I believe it would be mine. The introduction, the opening scene, the opening credits. You know, I felt like that whole opening sequence yeah. could have been the whole movie, and I would have been <laughs> 100% happy with it. Deadpool's fighting people. From the TVA. I mean, they say that in the trailer. And it's the opening, you know, you see the credits flash on the screen during the whole sequence. There's a, a fun song that goes with it. And, you know, just being of the 90s variety, born in the 80s, but growing up really essentially in the 90s. Music in this was fun. The entire soundtrack for this movie a bop. is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the fight sequences in this, you know. Were pretty good. Pretty good. I enjoyed it. For the most part. Some of the CGI was a little mm, iffy. And then there's some you could tell how green screeny it was. I love the choreography of them. Oh, yeah. There's, there's especially towards the end. Yeah. There's a, uh, a, a big fight sequence. And there's and a lot just going the camera on work that goes but... with that. And it just follows the fight down the street. It gives me the Mortal Kombat fights, mm-hmm. the Street Fighter, you know, that kind of 2D yes. sense. And it doesn't cut. And Jason Bourne is where we started to get all the cuts. <laughs> you get that kind of combo hallway fight, like from Daredevil, a little bit of Jessica Jones, Luke Cage ish. Where the camera is kind of constantly just following along with the fight. Yeah. And it doesn't do a whole bunch of jumps and cuts, no cuts or anything. Yeah. See, I like that. That, that, that takes good. really good choreography, talented stunt doubles. So the stunt work in this, you know, that's not CGI related, is... I thought it was, it was good. This Ryan, movie is hilarious. Ryan Reynolds' fourth wall breaks are... So, I will say one thing. Classic. There's a montage sequence in this, and... Oh, it's, it's funny, it, it, and you get, I think you get a lot of the classic, or you get some of the comic book nods in there. Yes. Stuff that I didn't like about this movie, you don't get necessarily a, a, a great villain. I don't think that they were bad. I'm gender blind, it's my cross to bear. <laughs> it's just that it's not a very well-defined villain, maybe? Always you, you hope for something a little bit more, but you're not there for that. Right. You're there for Deadpool, you're there for Wolverine. Exactly. It's it's in the title. Hugh Jackman, man. He's, He's been doing this for 20 plus years You're gonna at this do it till you're 90. X-Men came out in what, 2000? Yeah. So, I mean, 24 years later, this man is still playing the same character. <laughs> and he is still doing an exceptional job. And he's still ripped. Pun intended. <laughs> no. All right, guys. Have a good night. See you next time. <laughs> it is a superhero movie, so you, you, yeah. you're going to get the digital action. For the most part, they did a decent job in this movie with that. I've certainly seen worse CGI. Oh, by far. Black Panther fight sequence. <laughs> <laughs> so not only are there a billion cameos in this movie... There are a billion and one Easter eggs in this movie. Lee Field's own just feet, you know, because he's notorious for his drawings of feet in comic books. <laughs> and I thought that was a hilarious nod to him. You get a lot of tiny little Easter eggs throughout, some big Easter eggs throughout. 
Certainly worth seeing more than once. We oh, have, we've already seen it twice. I, I'm curious to see where it goes. Yeah, where it goes from here. I, I grew up on X-Men as a comic. That yeah. was always it for me. My brother was more the Punisher. You know, Punisher War Journal, Deadpool. My brother was bigger into that. We were a huge X-Men household. Yeah. I mean... I read them when I was younger. I don't have any of this information retained really outside of, you know. Yeah. Little things. And like the animated series yeah. was huge with huge. us. We, we, we would go watch it at the uh, Windy Hill Fire Station every Saturday morning. I think give it a shout out. Windy Hill. Woo! <laughs> Volunteer! <laughs> Woo! Or Spock. <laughs> These movies aren't being successful because it's oversaturated. Right. With this, you get something that's a little you know, different. I feel like also speaking of like Where the turn, <laughs> the digital aspect of these movies <clears throat> lately. I feel like earlier on we had a lot less of the CGI ness in mm -hmm. every part of these movies. Yeah. And those did so much better. Yeah. I wonder if that is part of the reason that these movies have been doing. Less. There's less weight to it, yes. Yeah. There's a famous picture that I, I saw in, in Side by Side, and it is of George Lucas filming Star Wars. They took a set photo with him with all the models and stuff that they yeah. used to film the original Star Wars. And then there's a picture of him. Now, granted, they added stuff to it, but it is just him sitting in an empty room with a green screen behind him. And I, it just, to me, sums up the difference between movies that were made with quality then and quality now. And yeah. and specifically with these Marvel superhero movies, and I find it with Star Wars too, you've just oversaturated too much and you've made these things not special anymore. It felt like a breath of fresh air. It did. It felt like a new type of Marvel movie. Yeah. So maybe this is where they're starting to head a little bit. They'll see, because I feel like this one's already been, like, really successful already. I'm very yeah. generous with my scores. I've been surprised. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to look at it. For, you know, Kevin Smith had a heart attack, right? And he he's like, I don't want to talk about bad yeah. movie, you know, the bad stuff anymore. Save that for, you know, your own shit. And I will still talk about the bad, but I want to, you know, people work hard to make a movie. It's not just the stars. It's not just the directors. It, you know, it is all the other people that work on it. So I can appreciate yeah. anybody that has ever made a movie, even if it is shit. Even if it's like the third I Know What You Did last summer, which is terrible. It's a terrible even movie. It is man board. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I appreciate that. I applaud that. It takes a lot, uh, it takes a lot of fucking stones it does. to do that. So I thoroughly enjoyed this movie, of course. Um, He's a Marvel guy. The performances in this movie were great. You get some emotion in this, and I like that. That was that was another thing I forgot to mention, is that you get some of that emotion, yeah. and I was like, it I felt a little missed. A little I didn't bit really, of, but I felt... A little know. bit of that, like, Logan-type emotion. Ooh, a little it long. brought in... Ooh. A little bit of that, uh... Not really Deadpool emotion, but... Almost I mean, the, uh... Not in Infinity War. Yeah. Not to that level. Not definitely not. To not that to that level, and not to the Logan level. But a surprise, a yeah. surprise in there for sure. I was like, this. Look at this act. And Hugh Jackman's right. got it. He's got the chops. He's he's still not got it. He's not just Logan. He's not just Wolverine. Like he's 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 an excellent actor and an excellent singer. And that bod. <laughs> <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> Speaking of too many Easter eggs. You can have that where you're you trying can. to do too much fan service, and I, I'm listen, listen. You go back to the first roundies, where Ready Player. You heard that? <laughs> where Ready Player One? No, not our first rounds, but oh, you, our first roundies. roundies which so, are we still going to call it that? Into the Spider Verse, perfect, perfect, perfect movie. Great movie. You get Easter eggs. It's a it's a very intriguing art concept. Uh, great characters, good music. I just felt like it hit right. And then yes. you get across the Spider-Verse, which is people love it, people enjoyed it, and I oh, I felt like the artwork was a little muddled, and I felt like the Easter eggs were too many. Right. There was too much going on that didn't serve the purpose of the story, and it fell a little flat. 
to me. I can see that, and I can somewhat agree with that. A movie like Ready Player One, where you have non-stop Easter eggs, yeah. that movie, yeah, I can see that. It deserves to have all those Easter eggs. It needs all of them because of the story. Yeah. But some of these movies, like Across to the Spider... Across to the... <laughs> <laughs> Words. Across the Spider-Verse, any of the Marvel movies, I think there is an excess of Easter eggs in these movies where, yes, some people love seeing them, Yeah. but there's a lot. There's got to be... To some degree, you have to control it a little bit better. You know, we touched on this a little bit with the Twisters uh, episode we did. Like, Ghostbusters Afterlife, I thought served pretty well. There are a few little where you're like, oh, this is a, a bit much. I thought they did a great tribute to Har Harold Ramis in that. A lot of these legacy sequels have to tie in these main characters and stuff. And Twisters didn't really do that. I understand it. Yeah. It's, it's probably I appreciated it. Though. I did too, and I think I think a lot of people did because we've got to the point now where it's like, oh my god, here we go again. It's her mom, or this is that, and and right. and you know, I think fans just get tired of that. Anyway, I'm ready to move on. Right? Is right. you Jackman done with with uh, Wolverine? I mean, we'll see. We thought he was done before. But... I mean, that ending. How could he not be? I'm Listen, I, I'm, I'm not a big spoiler, um, but I will spoil this. Han dies in the end. You had to tell me. If you haven't seen The Force Awakens by now, we're almost <laughs> 10 years later. My score for this is probably higher than it should be, but also lower than I feel like I actually liked this movie. And the past couple scores have reflected that for me as well. I'm going to score this. 8.8. Oh, nice. I enjoyed this. It was fun. It was a good watch. I will watch this again. And uh, maybe not I'll, again. I'll own it. Maybe. Buy your physical media, too. Buy your copies. You get so many... Don't just live on the streaming anymore. Support and also... that, because they're trying to take them out of stores now. You know, you've got Best Buy that's already done it. Walmart's talking about taking physical about games About to open my own out. Blockbuster again. It's coming back. We have a Regal in our area, so we go to Regal. Uh, cheaper to get the monthly pass than yeah. it is to have Hulu and all this other <laughs> stuff and, and just to go to the theater. So I theaters. And now they even offer you a popcorn bucket and a drink. That you can refill for, for like 10, 10 bucks. bucks combined, not, not individual. Not even sponsored by Regal. <laughs> we and have it, no sponsors but us. You can change that today. Regal. Today. Change it today. Regal. Did you guys see? You didn't give a score. I didn't give a score? No. Thank God. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> mm. Hmm. One of my favorite superhero movies. Uh, especially in recent memory. <laughs> that's, not, that's not even a question. 8.6 out of 10. Respectful. Yeah, 8.6. I think so. And that could go up. Could go down. I, it has rewatchability, but it's well, funny. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is hilarious. He's he got is. like such a good. Uh, he, he's so gentle with his comedy. You know, he's gotten I think better with his delivery of those intentionally comedic lines. All right, since, Van like... Milder. Did you guys see Deadpool and Wolverine? If not, go see it in theaters now. Go see it right now. If you guys saw it, we want to know what you thought about it. If you like, leave a message in those comments. Next time we're talking, so. We're doing one where we saw it in theaters, and then we're going to revisit one that we've seen previously in theaters, and it can't be within the 10-year frame. So one of us may have seen it in theaters. This next movie we're going to be talking about, we both saw in theaters. I saw it multiple time in theaters. I Nin think I just saw it the once. We went together. We'll see you next time. We saw it in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> oh.